Howdy once again, it's Mr. Pete, your internet shop teacher. Thanks for joining me, and some of you may remember an auction that I attended last year where I bought these 19 planes, and I'll put the name of the video on here so you can go back and check that out. I also bought that Delta disc sander at that time, but just on a whim I bought these 19 planes so that I could talk about them. Really, that's the only reason. But if you go back and look at that video, you'll also see there were many more planes than, than this. These were pretty much the junk planes that nobody wanted, and they grouped them together and sold them as one. But they went through the planes, and uh, collectors picked out what really were good ones. Like, there might have been a couple bedrocks and so on, but these are just common ones. And the reason I want to talk about that is because, of course, industrial arts has gone down the tubes. But I wanted to talk a little bit about Stanley Plains and the part that they played in, uh, oh, they called it manual arts and then they called it uh, manual education and industrial arts and technical education. There's a lot of different names, but they were teaching with this method over a hundred years ago and it was pretty effective. A lot of you people probably went through training like that either in junior high or high school, and if you did, leave a comment. I would be interested in seeing that. Were those fond days for you, or were they bad days for you in that shop class? I know you may object to the way I have these stacked like cordwood, but they essentially are common planes, none of them collectible. There might be a few goodies here that I will go through, but I want to explain the different kind of planes and the evolution uh, of Stanley and how they went from pretty quality planes down to mediocre mass marketed planes, some of them made in other countries, and all of those are represented here. A number five was probably the most common that was used in high schools. It's a jack plane and it's a general purpose plane that uh, can be used for many different uses. In the junior highs, they often use a five and a quarter, sometimes called a junior jack plane. It fit better in the hands of a junior high boy, perhaps a 12-year-old or a 13-year-old, who wasn't really strong enough to hold one of these uh, bigger planes. And someplace in here, yeah, right here, there's a number four. I don't know if these were used much, but this is probably what was shown in industrial arts training for teachers and these were the most common ones available in catalogs that the teachers, typically woodshop teachers, uh, used to order their supplies and it was a limited budget and I also, it's kind of comical, I want to show you in here that what, what high school kids, grade school kids, what they did to the planes, not because of vandalism so much but just these have been taken apart so many times and none of them would be genuine examples. That is, the parts were mixed and matched probably across the bench and parts lost and the teacher would order extra parts and repair them in the summer and, and so on. So, all right, let's take a look at one of these. All right, most of them are going to say Bailey on the front. They're Stanley planes, but it says Bailey, made in USA, usually number five back here, but that varied depending on when they were made. Uh, Bailey was a man that worked for Stanley and he was a contractor and, and made planes and parts and so on for Stanley, but he held a good number of patents on these. That's why his name on there. So did a man by the name of Trout, not spelled like the fish. Now all of the older ones came with a shorter knob. Can you see this? Compare here the height of that knob. You Stanley collectors know all of this, I know that, but some of you may not. But this actually is a very old knob. How it survived that long, I do not know, but later they became higher, I suppose, so you could have a better grip on them. This handle is in bad shape. It's split and banged because it's probably been off many, many times. They're held on with, uh, with a screw. By the way, this is a corrugated plane on the bottom, whereas this is just a, a regular plane. This was supposed to reduce friction, supposedly, I don't know. Probably made a big difference if you were using that. 
all day long. Already I see that I'm talking too much about these, but th this interests me as much. But th these often fell on the floor and then the, the knob would break and had to be replaced. And you could buy all those replacement parts. Broadhead Garrett packs them in all of the school catalogs. Why is this plane painted blue? Maybe it was the teachers. Keep your hands off it. This is the one I'm going to use for demonstrations. I went through all of this. I didn't really teach wood shop, just one semester in my whole life, but I'm a metal teacher. But in seventh or eighth grade, I forgot which, we went through the plane, and the first thing we had to do in there after we spent some time in the classroom, we learned the names of all the parts, and Stanley made beautiful charts, heavy charts. You've seen those on eBay, and, and uh, that was used to help the kids learn the names of the parts. So they would take uh, the frog off. Well, I should start here. The cap. Holy mackerel, that was tight. The cap, and the later models are kidney shaped. Some of the earlier ones are not kidney shaped. And they would take the blade out along with the, uh, which we call plain iron, and, and the cap. And a good part of what they did, and, and I didn't like doing this at all, we had to sharpen these and have them approved by the teacher and then put them back together. That took a couple days in itself. And when you're a grade school kid, you don't want to do that, really. You want to start making some, sh some shaving, some, some chips, but it sure helps to learn the correct way to do things. Also on this one, you're going to see that, that this is bent. They were often bent. Remember, they were dropped. Here's an example that used a Bakelite knob instead of a brass knob. So these were bought over a period of time. See, here's the brass knob. Let me talk about the totes. The, the handle here is called the tote. Originally, all of them were rosewood, and they almost always were damaged. I had heard that uh, sometimes uh, carpenters that, in woodshop, not woodshop, but uh, cabinet makers, would break that off because it, it wore a blister in here. So you'll often see them that are broken off. Matter of fact, most of the times you're going to see that. But anyway, the earlier ones, well, even into the 50s and 60s were, were rosewood, which was an import. By, by the way, here's a number 12 here, so, and a number 20. So these were issued to the students by those numbers. Most of, most of these are numbered. Back to the tote now, you're going to see a gradual degradation in the parts. For instance, here's a much more modern one. Varnished, just some kind of uh, cheap hardwood. But they needed to make them ch uh, cheap because a lot of them had to be replaced every year if the teacher was on top of it. Some teachers didn't care. They just let it go to pot and I've, I've seen a lot of teachers like that. They, in some ways they gave up because it seemed hopeless to them. I'm not going to take one of these apart. At first I was, but it, you know, it's getting too long already. But I wanted to show you, there's a nice tote. I'm surprised that's still in such good shape. But at one time, and these were really the ones that I was interested in when I bought this whole batch. They made an aluminum handle. These were replacement handles. I don't think they ever came on a brand new plane. Notice that it's Mark Stanley, made in USA, and probably fairly student proof. That was the whole idea, to make it student proof. But still, they would get knocked over, and the long screw that went through here would get bent. That usually could be straightened, but you know, the, the damage, it, it was almost funny. Notice also here we have a large brass knob as opposed to the small brass knob. You know, what I'm doing, ending up doing here is a, is a bit of a type study, they call this. I didn't really want to do that. But uh, there's another one here. Well, that one also says Stanley, but sometimes you're going to run into them that have no name on them, and I think they were just aftermarket made uh, cheaper. And remember, Schools didn't have much of a budget. 
And there's another short knob that's in good shape. There's number 20, corrugated. This one is chipped right in here. The iron is chipped. A lot of times they were dropped off the bench and there's a chip here. This is missing or this is missing right in here. That doesn't really affect the um, use of it. Well, here's one here. Very common. Broken off right here. And generally teachers had a whole cabinet full of broken ones and, and all kinds of parts. Here's the other handle that I was looking for, an aluminum handle. Notice there is no name on that. As to the manufacturer, I mean. Over the years, there were many changes. And here is one that is reinforced here. This is a much more modern one, probably made in the 60s or 70s. I'm taking a guess at it. And this appears to be some very... Uh, durable plastic of some kind on the knob. So they were, and notice we got missing parts here. Well, I'm digging through these now. And you can see that here is one of the more modern ones and there is a broken tote. So that's been dropped. This survived. Look at the bend here because they were making, that's really cheap compared to some of the older ones. Let me show you an older one here. Where it's actually two pieces. This little thumb part here is fastened almost with a mortise and tender, a uh, tenon. Got a movable little disc there. So this was still a fairly quality one. And oh, I'm glad I picked this one up because here's one that has been cracked right down through here. That was a weak spot. And it's been brazed and ground down. And whoever did that repair job did a very nice job. I hope it was the metal teacher or the welding teacher. You know, when, when you taught other subjects, such as welding or metal shop or machine shop like I did, there wasn't a day when uh, another teacher didn't bring in something for me to fix or repair or or other teachers or, you know, sometimes a guy would walk off the street and come in the shop, the open door, and say, hey, can you fix it? And you know what mistake I made? I always did. You know, I never said no, and I kind of dropped what I was doing in order to help people, but I found that people didn't return those favors. Even within my own school, sometimes I'd go to another teacher and say, hey, can you help me with this? I need a piece of wood. and. And they'd say, yeah, yeah, lay it over there. And then they never would do it. You know, you wouldn't get any help out of them. Even if I had helped them the day before, you know, they had short memory. That discouraged me, but that's a human nature. And I didn't mean to turn this. Well, among all 19 planes here, I'm sure that I probably could find and put piece together probably five good ones. But again, these are common planes. Even if I did that, the value of a number five which was the single most common plane size, they're still only worth 10 or 12 or 15 dollars. They just do not have a high value unless they are the real old ones and, and are certain types and are genuine and have not been pieced together. But the, the fact that these have been mangled and are out of a, a school shop, you know, does not give them much value at all. Remember, I bought the whole pile for a fairly reasonable. I'm not going to tell you what I paid, but it was more than I wanted to pay because there's always somebody else that that is bidding. And again, I want you people to remember that I am outbid 90% of the time and uh, I do not get that many bargains. And a, a good number of people see only one thing here, a pile of scrap iron. And maybe they were right, but the name Stanley was a bit of a magic name to many people. Well, the school where I bought all of this merchandise did not close their shops. They were reducing the size of their shops and, and uh, changing their, uh, 
their angle at how they're teaching shop, I believe, but this is a thing of the past, and I don't know if any schools are still teaching this. You know, have you heard the word jointer? Jointer? <laughs> so why would anybody do this other than a home uh, shop person that just plain enjoys it because there's a lot of pleasure in using a plane and hearing the sound of that shaving coming off, you know, if the blade is sharp and everything's tuned up, there's, there is pleasure in that. But things have changed in uh, education and especially in industrial arts, vocational, technical education and all of that. And if there are many views on this, I'm going to talk about what happened to these programs and why. Some of that you know, but it wasn't just one thing. It wasn't just safety. Some people uh, are saying that, oh, it just was unsafe. Uh, there, there are a lot of other reasons that, that came together to cause the schools to basically discontinue most of the shop programs. And almost all junior highs have done that already. But anyway, if there is a, a lot of views, I, I will talk about that. Otherwise, I'll just assume there is no interest. Uh, you know, I won't waste my time or yours. I hope some of you enjoyed this little talk about Stanley Plains and the way it was done. Oh, and I forgot to tell you that. So then after the student had put this back together, we got a sharp blade, although you know, very questionable how sharp some of them were because the teacher would sometimes give up, you know, that you know, he's, he's never going to get it right because it isn't an easy thing to do for a 13 or 14 year old to put a true edge, you know, and then, they would hone them. They, they never did use a grinder. They used a hone, so that, that took a lot of time. But then the next step was to give the boys a board and to square it up. And you talk about a difficult job to get it truly square. And in some ways, that was discouraging to a child because they, they didn't want to square a board. They wanted to make their birdhouse or whatever it was going to be. So, all right. This is Mr. Peake, your YouTube shop teacher, saying so long for now. Leave a comment if you care to. I may not be able to respond to all of them. Thank you and see you next time.